When was the last time you drove down a street here in Hawaii and asked yourself, where did the name of this street come from? Well, if you've never have, this will be your first time and we'll give you the answer right here on Aloha Authentic. <laughs> For this month of October, or as we say in Hawaiian, Oka Kopa, we're highlighting streets that carry names of past Hawaiian royals. This week, we talk about a street named after a past governor of both Hawaii and Oahu Islands. In the Ahupua of Nu'uanu, in the moku of Kona here on Oahu, lies a street that carries the name of an early Christian convert. We are talking about Kuakini Street, named after John Adams Kuakini. Most, familiar, most will be familiar with the street because of Kuakini Medical Center. However, Kuakini himself didn't contribute much to the world of medicine. Born Kaluoi Konahale Kuakini, he took on the name John Adams after the U.S. president then in office, John Quincy Adams, during a time when chiefs were encouraged to take on English names after Christianity was introduced. Kuakini became the first recorded royal governor of Hawaii Island in 1820, following the relocation of the capital of the Hawaiian Kingdom from Kona Hawaii to Lahaina Maui. Kuakini later built Hulihe'e Palace in 1838 as a residence in Kona, which later ended up in the hands of Princess Ruth Ke'eli Kolani, the wealthiest woman in all of Hawaii, and now standing as a museum open to the public. Did you know? Now you do. Now you do. Now I do. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kamaka. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions. So who were Kuakini's parents? So Kuakini's parents, there's one that we're familiar with. Um, the mother, though, Nama. Namahana'i ikalele onalani. <laughs> Took me a lot of practice to say that one, even though I could pronounce one words. Uh, but the father is Ke'eomoku Papa'iahiahi. Ah. And we've, uh, if we've tuned in last week, we talked about him last week. Okay, and how long did Kuakini serve as the, he was the royal governor of Hawaii Island, right? Of Hawaii for, Island. For how long? For a while. Now, taking a quick step back, because I see this image. So he's mm -hmm. also the brother to Queen Ka'ahumanu, who we also previously ah, talked about. Okay. Um, but as royal governor of Hawaii Island, again, as mentioned in the video, 1820, and that lasted until his death in 1844. So roughly about 24 years. Um, but interesting enough, talking about Ka'ahumanu, she was the Kuhina Nui at the time, and mm -hmm. here on Oahu. And he, appo she appointed Kuakini as royal governor of Oahu at 1831, so he's already the governor of Hawaii. And that was because, as we mentioned earlier on Liliha, who was planning a rebellion against Ka'ahumanu, she chose to replace Liliha to end that situation. Oh. So he actually served royal governor for two islands at the same time. Interesting. Okay, in, in your video as well, you also mentioned Hulihe'e Palace. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that, well, Kuakini helped really establish that's yeah. still here today, aside from that? Yeah, so uh, that would be in Kona as well. So of course, okay. Hulihe'e Palace, which is a must see, go check that out if you have the chance. But there's also, he built a, a low level wall around Kailua Kona area as Ahupua'a, and in this sense, Ahupua'a is boundaries between pigs and mm. the cattle that were left behind from George Vancouver, who was the explorer at that time. Uh, so that wall is known as as the Kapanui o Kuakini, which means the Great Wall of Kuakini, and you can see parts of that through Kona today. Okay, very neat. And and you can just head on down and look yeah, at it. Yeah, if if. I, so I, I spent some time in, in Hawaii Island, on mm -hmm. Hawaii Island, and if I stand corrected, I think if you go visit Hapuna Beach, there was a stone wall that I remember seeing that leads into that area. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's the wall. I would put that out for viewers. If that, if that is correct or if that's wrong, please let me know and confirm because I would like to know. But this is an image that, uh, of the wall that re still resides. And again, Hapuna Beach is a wall that looks just like this. So okay. Maybe that's the But one. again, it is found in Kailua Kona. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks so much. And then for those who, of course, we learned so much from all of your segments. <laughs> for those who want to catch up on past ones, where can of they go? Of course. Uh, make your way over to alohaauthentic.org where everything is listed out for you. Okay, perfect. And then we also post all of our segments, too, um, on K22. So well. make sure you yes. check it out. And then you're also going to be heading to Bishop Museum a We're little bit later. We're going to visit our friend DeSoto's. Uh, DeSoto Brown at the Bishop Museum to share more information and education on who Kuakini is. Awesome. I love when he comes on too. He's such an awesome person. So full of knowledge. <laughs> Knows everything about everything it seems. Yes. I love it. 
Aloha, we're here at Bishop Museum where we're in their Kahili room, which first of all is just straight out beautiful. The moment you walk in here, you're walking into a cloud of living history. Now, second of all, we're here to focus more on our ali'i this month. Again, this month for our street names, we're focusing on street names carrying the name of our past ali'i or past royals. Now, this week, we're talking about Kuakini Street, which is named after John Adams Kuakini. Now we're here with Bishop Museum historian DeSoto Brown. Good morning again. Good morning. We're making good friends with you. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> uh, so again, we're here with about Kuakini Street. Yes. Can you share a little bit about background, who this man is? Who this man is? This man was one of the colleagues of the cohorts of Kamehameha I. He was the brother of Ka'ahumanu, who was Kamehameha I's most important, most powerful wife. And he was a man who was a, an acting governor of the island of Oahu, but he seems to have spent most of his time and done most of his work on the island of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I think the one most interesting thing that you can point out about him is that he was an early entrepreneur, meaning that in the 1830s, when Hawaii was having to deal with the outside world economically, he tried planting cotton as a crop. And he was understanding that this was a new world in which you had to be dealing with the outside world in ways that Hawaiians had not done in previous times. So I think as a, an ali'i, he showed a great deal of awareness of what his role was going to be in terms of bringing Hawaiian islands and the Hawaiian people into the 19th century in a bigger world that ranged outside of just the Hawaiian Islands. So this we're talking about mid 1800s to the ending of that century? Absolutely, and in the 19th century, there was a huge push to f try to figure out what kind of crops could be grown here. How could we, as a small group of islands in the Pacific, deal with everybody else in the world economically? We wanted to bring things in, but we also had something, we had to have something to export. So they tried every possible crop to try to find a place, and of course, what really worked ended up working was sugar and pineapple. Mm -hmm. Now, I think today we'll be more familiar with Kuakini Hospital and Medical Center um, carrying that name. Where did that come from? Did John Adams Kuakini have contributed to healthcare back in the day? No, actually, it's just a happenstance that those hospitals, which there were used to be two hospitals on that street happened to end up there. Uh, the first hospital was originally called Japanese Hospital. It changed its name by World War II to Kuakini Hospital because it was located on the street named for Kuakini. And also down the street used to be the Children's Hospital. So it happened that two hospitals were there, but there's no actual direct connection to Kuakini the man. Okay, good. Thank you for clearing that up because especially when we talk about Queen's Medical Center, it has that direct connection. Um, okay, so Kahili Room, you know, the, this is, I'm just getting chicken skin just saying Kahili Room. Looking at all these Kahili, and of course we're standing in front of King Kamehameha the Great, the husband to Ka'ahumanu, the sister to Kuakini. What, so these Kahili are actually from their time owned by them? Some of them are, yes. Kahili Room was constructed from scratch at Bishop Museum in its first building to be where the Kahili collection was kept because that was one of the foundational collections of Bishop Museum when it was started in 1889. And to provide a safe place that not only cared for them but where people could see them, the Kahili Room was developed and was always named that. Um, it went through other uses over the years, but uh, back in the 1990s, we returned it to its original use, and it's arranged by a chronology of the ruling ali'i that were from the time period in which kahili were used. So we come up to the 20th century with the last ali'i, which is, of course, Queen Liliuokalani. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is such a, this is so cool. I don't even know how to explain it. It's literally l walking in history. Now, Kahili, again, is a symbol, was one of the most important figures in old Hawaii, as that was a symbol that royalty was coming in. It's, for some ali'i, you weren't necessarily allowed to be in the presence of that particular person. So Kahili was really the marker between life or death at that point in history. But again, we'll be having more on this throughout the month, and then, of course, the months to come, talking about our street names, reporting here at the Bernice, uh, Bernice Powahi Bishop Museum in Kalihi, tossing it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks so much, Kamaka. Very interesting. interesting. Yep.